Hey friends, we are Dave and Ashley Willis, hosts of the Naked Marriage Podcast and part of the team here at XO Marriage. And we've got some amazing guests in the studio today and join us as we talk about the legacy and the future of marriage. Hey friends, welcome to our first ever XO Unscripted and it is the first ever shoot we're doing in this brand new facility. This is just a dream come true. I mean, years and years of planning and praying, and we have got the founder of the ministry, Pastor Jimmy Evans, the man, the there goat. There he is. The there, I mean, yeah. come on. 50, I can't believe I'm here. I mean, <laughs> I, it's just, we're going to have so much fun. Yeah. It's, we're celebrating Pastor Jimmy and Karen's That's 50th right. anniversary, 30th yeah. uh, anniversary of EXO Marriage. And we've got our friends, Jimmy and Irene Rollins. Come on. Probably Yay. our coolest friends. Okay. Everybody needs like at least one set of like legit cool <laughs> so friends. Yes. That just, when, just by association, people think you're cooler. Oh, yeah. And I tell people I know you guys, and all of a sudden my, you know, my cred goes up a little bit. You know, they're like, you know, I'm like. Well, I'll tell people yeah. that you're my fashion consultant. Oh, wow. Oh. No, you and don't you want that. I shop, I shop at Costco, man. You don't, want, oh my you, don't want, God. you don't want my fashion tips. But we're thrilled you guys are here. A huge part of the team here at EXO. We're going to talk about uh, your two equals one. You're, you're, we're going to yes. talk about all that you're doing here at EXO. And I'm telling Great. you, like, we've we've gone to a new level Come with on. you guys. Yeah. We so, love being a part of yeah. it. So, so honored to be right. a part So thank you. So we're this is unscripted. Mm-hmm. We're hanging out today. I want to start, though, with the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> Pastor Jimmy Evans, who, like, you know, you're... None of this, obviously, would be happening without without you. you Jimmy, Karen, and Jesus are the reason. Right. Come on. <laughs> Everything is. here has happened. And so how are, how are you feeling right now? I mean, this has got to be just... This is surreal. It really yeah. is. We... You know, we've never had, uh, we've had offices. Uh, our original building was a casket company. And we, wow. we, had, a, we had a mercy ministry. Uh, when, I was, when I was pastoring in Amarillo, we started a mercy ministry. It was a 40,000 square foot building, but it was the Texas Coffin Company. And we rented it, and then we bought it later on. But it, the, where they actually painted the caskets is where we produced our TV show. Wow. And, and it was in a terrible part of town. It, we, tr- we tried to get a studio audience, but people were afraid to come. <laughs> the, one, one couple came, they got shot at on the oh way over there. They really did. So it was, but we had a train track by the door, by, right by the wall of where the studio was. And so we would be recording TV and we'd have to stop the train coming. Is there a train coming? Train. <laughs> oh my God. But it was, it was humble beginnings to say the least. Mm-hmm. But you know, when, when we started, it, we just didn't know anything. We, we really, the first five years were just a, a series of mistakes, honestly. But, you know, we were starting and the Lord was gracious and, and, we, and we started small. You know, I say God makes you, God allows you to make your big mistakes in a little room. And when you're finished, he opens the door. Wow. And Ooh, so, you know, and it's, it's a merciful thing. Mm-hmm. So we, uh, we made our big mistakes in a little room. And then we grew, just grew a little bit at a time. But, it was, it, but to sit here right now, uh, having you know, been through the journey we've been on. It's amazing. First of all, it's amazing to be at a place like this. But secondly, it's amazing to have our own building wow. in such a wonderful location, uh, you know, really where people can fly in from all over the world. Yes. We're five minutes from DFW Airport. Uh, and we cross the street from a wonderful hotel, you know, the people that stay at. So it's just God had this place in mind. Wow. Mm-hmm. You know, back when we didn't know, he had this place in mind. And so I, I just feel like we're where God put us. But it, it is hard to believe because it, it's surreal. It, it's the ideal place for what we do. It, it, I love it. it. Is. And talk about legacy. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the theme kind of of this first episode of Unscripted today. And I mean, what a legacy. You know, we actually celebrated your, your and Karen's 50th wedding yeah. anniversary last night. Huge celebration. You don't I mean, look old enough. Uh, no, you really don't. <laughs> right. I mean, seriously, that is the truth. But, I mean, just hearing the stories from lives that have been touched by both of you and what yeah. you have done in this ministry. Um, and we're, we're some of those people. Yeah. yeah. And I know yeah. that you guys are some of those Absolutely. people. Absolutely. It's just, it's just the coolest thing. And I've shared this before, but I haven't shared it um, recently. But I wanted to remind you, Jimmy, that the first time we came across you and Karen was when I was actually at my lowest point in my life. Wow. And I was going through um, a terrible bout with anxiety and depression that had gone on for years. And I often, in the night when it would hit me and I'd be having panic attacks, I would turn on Christian television. And you guys were always, it was like you were one of those shows 
that I would always watch the whole wow. show. Wow. Wow. And you just brought me hope. I wow. mean, you brought me hope and you met me right where I was. I think your authenticity uh, was something that always made people like me lean in right. and, and just give me hope for the next day. And to think that all these years later, you know, we joined the team about six years ago. Yeah. What a full circle moment. Yeah. I mean, and I know that my, our story is like the stories of so many other people that you, it just, what you guys have done and how God has used you has touched people all over the world. And I know that Dave and I um, and our whole family, we're just so grateful to, to have oh, been yeah. some of those people and yeah. to be alongside you now being part of this incredible team. Grateful doesn't even... Yeah, it doesn't. Up, it, it, it sounds... Yeah, you know, we, we, we started doing... When, when you do television, you don't know who you're reaching. Right. You know, you're yeah. looking in a camera. And I was sitting in an airport one day. We'd probably been on TV you know, for five or ten years at this point. And I was sitting in an airport one day flying somewhere and this bad-looking guy Bad looking guy. He started staring, he's staring at me. And I, you know, you know when someone's staring at you. Yeah. So, you know, so after a little while, I just looked at him and said, How are you? And he said, You're that marriage guy on TV. And I said, Yeah. And he said, I'm third generation drug cartel. And he said, wow. Every man in my family beats his wife. And he said, We have a violent family and all the men beat their wives. And he said, I'm the only man in my family that doesn't beat his wife. Wow. And he said, I got out of the drug cartel business. And he said, we have three daughters, and he said, every Sunday morning, we all get in front of the TV, and you teach us how to be a family. Oh, my goodness. That's a, I mean, it's Jimmy, amazing. It's I mean, amazing. The generations the, that are forever different. Yes. Because of, you said yes to God, yes. and you and Karen have walked in that faithfulness. I yes. mean, there's just, there's no way to quantify mm -hmm. it. There's mm -hmm. just no way. A thousand years from now, the world is, is going to look so different because yeah. of the seeds you've planted, and thank you. But yes, just the... Uh, knowing that you're touching lives. But the thing that Brent said last night uh, at the celebration was we want to leave an army. That's great. Right. And that's who you guys are. You know, Karen and I, you know, for us to, when our taillights bob down the street one day, you know, you guys will take our place. And that, that's just. A... The so honored, Pastor Jimmy, to be a part of this incredible movement and legacy. Um, the first time I ever laid eyes on you and Pastor Karen, you, we were um, at home watching Christian TV with a little one in full-time ministry, um, had left six-figure salaries to, for like under 30000 with a <laughs> family. And small <laughs> yes. yep. small rooms. Yeah, small rooms. Yeah, small rooms. Small rooms. And I, we just didn't know what we were doing with marriage. And just to look at the screen and to hear your authenticity about your own story, your own journey, and then how it was similar to my husband. And I was like, wait a minute. And then Pastor Karen was, Karen was just sharing and sharing how it had impacted her emotionally and yeah. how you guys navigated the nuances of uh, growth past that moment in time when you thought it was just the end of the world or you're, yeah. you're, you almost... Um, awakened this thing in my mind that it doesn't have to be a light misery doesn't have to be a life sentence that's right wow. misery yeah. in a marriage yeah and we could say these things out loud right. that you're not happy yeah. that we're like i think you're too loud when you oh, talk to me i feel tacked you know what i'm saying like <laughs> but that was real that was that moment sure because i had ptsd i didn't realize yeah. that how he spoke to me impacted me greatly and the enemy's strategy was to cause division. Right. And so to see your authenticity, I'm so grateful. Thank you for being so open. It taught us yeah. that we had permission to feel, to be human, mm -hmm. and to seek the Lord for this transformation. Well, yeah. see, y'all, yeah. what makes all of you guys so effective is you're so open mm -hmm. and so vulnerable. You know, Jesus, when he was resurrected, he came and showed off his scars. And he wow. said, come touch me. I've got scars. So he, our scars heal. You know, redeem scars heal. And, you know, you, you just can't, uh, you, uh, without scars, there's no, there's no redemption. Yes. And so when you got, you show your scars off. Yeah. And I think that, that with Karen and me, the, if, there's, if there's a reason that God chose us, it's because we were willing to be vulnerable. You know, because we didn't know a lot more than anybody else knew. But, but we had been through what we had been through. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I think that's what is attractive to people, wow. like to you guys, mm -hmm. is that you get up, you tell your stories, and you, you know, actually, you were talking in Scottsdale about the depression that you've been through. All. There's so many people that go through that, <coughs> and if you don't talk about it, how can they get help? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. I'm proud of you guys for doing that. Thank you. Well, I'm just blown away uh, just at this weekend, and just uh, you know, seeing all the people come and celebrate, and hearing your story, and he just hearing the stories of all the people uh, that have been touched by EXO, by you and Karen's 
testimony. Mm -hmm. You know, that word testimony, it, you know, it means do it again. Mm -hmm. And I love because every time we're authentic, every time we share our mm -hmm. story, yeah. uh, I believe that we empower people that God can do it again That's in their right. lives. That's right. And I think legacy is really being a part of something and doing something that outlives you. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you mm -hmm. for uh, saying yes. I want to thank you for um, saying the hard things, for being a voice. You know, I, I grew up with my parents being pastors, and I didn't have, you know, they're my parents. Mm -hmm. And you pastored yeah. me from afar. Mm -hmm. Good. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I'll never forget over 15 years ago sitting in a room uh, by myself. Uh, the room was packed, but I felt alone. The room was full, yeah. but I was empty. Yeah. And uh, I was contemplating divorce and, and leaving the ministry and asking God, was I still useful? And you preached the message. And it wasn't even a marriage conference. And afterwards, there was a marriage today table. And I walked by it, and a guy said, are you okay? And I said, no. Mm -hmm. And he said, can I get your phone number? And he followed up with me. And that was an extension of you. Huh. Yep. And I am so glad that that day gave me the power to do the work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We like to say it this way. You're not allowed to complain about a marriage that you refuse to work on. That's yeah. right. That's and you've taught us that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I just wanted to say thank you for the yeah. legacy. You're welcome. Thank you for yeah. uh, the strength. Thank you for the hours of study, the warfare, what your family has gone through mm -hmm. to produce this. Mm. It's worth it for our kids. Yeah. My son gets to see yeah. an African-American yeah. male yeah. as a father stick it out and mm. work yeah. through with yeah. his mom in a way that he can have a legacy yeah. mm -hmm. of health and wholeness yeah. and yeah. oneness. It's powerful. Yeah. I'm grateful. It's, so it's powerful. Thank it's powerful. you. It's powerful. Yeah. I well, I, I'm sure over these days, you have been looking back a lot, you and Karen sharing stories, thinking about memories. Like if you look at the timeline of these last 30 years, what are some of those kind of milestone markers that stand out to you as turning points or, or funny moments or just uh, what, what are those memories that kind of rise to the top as you think about well, Brent it? Brent asked me to share with the staff one day about, you know, the kind of the milestone moments of the ministry and everything. I think I cried for about an hour. Mm -hmm. and. But it was, it was war. Mm, yeah. When we started the ministry, it was just war. Wow. And the devil obviously didn't like what we were doing. And all hell broke loose on every level. And um, we got so discouraged. Yeah. And the, the breakthrough moments were, like we were talking about the kids, the little, hearing the voices of the little kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I just, I just felt... Um, I told somebody I had dignity before this ministry, you know, because it was just so humiliating to go through. We were broke. And we were shutting down one time. Literally, there, we were shutting our ministry down. And, uh, and I was relieved. And I just thought, you know, this is just too hard. If this was God, it wouldn't be this hard, is what I thought. And so... Karen's dad came to me one day and he said, do you want to shut the ministry down? I said, yes. And he said, why? And I said, it's too hard. And I said, there's something wrong with us. You know, I said, there's just people don't want to give to us. It's just everything we do is just 10 times harder than it should be. And he told me, he told me a story about his business because he's a wealthy guy. He, they'd never given us a nickel. And, um, and he said, I was standing in the, uh, in the airport in St. Louis, I had 70 cents in my pocket after I bought my ticket home. And he said I'd failed in business. I was going home to tell Karen's mom that I was going to have to sh shut down my business and go to work with somebody or something. He said, and I got home, and I got a call from a guy that I just called on, and he be became my first customer. And that's how, he said, that's how my business works. And he said, um, well, I want to give you $2 million. <laughs> wow. yeah. That's a good day. Yeah. 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 God in heaven. It's a good day. When you're faithful in little things, God opens bigger doors. And you you were so faithful in those mm -hmm. in the little rooms. You were yeah. faithful in those yeah. every moment that God gave you. And when the time was right and you passed every test, it's like he he just kept opening bigger doors. And your your life and your legacy and your ministry, it's such a, a testament to to how God wants to bless his faithful his faithful yeah. servants. Yes. And I I don't want <clears throat> Whatever we went through, wow. 
I don't want, I don't want the next generation to go through. Because people didn't talk about marriage. When we started doing it, people, churches didn't talk about marriage. There weren't marriage conferences. And we started, we started to do the simulcast, and you know, churches started having marriage conferences and things like that. And a lot of churches still don't talk about marriage, but more do. And um, the, uh, we want there to be um, a generation where marriage is spoken about honestly. Like you, you, there's hope. People, people are seeing African American yeah. fathers and mothers together. They're seeing people, to, fathers and mothers together, and working through depression, working through all the issues we have, and it gives them hope. We went through hell. We we really did, and it, but it was worth it. Thank you. I mean, I I feel like for all of us, we have we have fewer scars yeah. because of the arrows you took, yes. Good. and Good. we could never thank you enough. Good. Yeah. For that. Well, it's the it, this ministry has just begun. That's the way I feel, and it just gives me so much joy. You guys, yeah. what, so what's much. your dream for the for the future? Because I mean, this isn't a it, by it all a finish line. You know, this is yeah. this is just getting started. What, what do you I, want the next thirty years to be? Change, change. It's it's wow. not about fun and games. It's about within ten minutes of this building, there's so much suffering we can't even imagine. Wow. You know, and I want to change that. Yeah, and the suffering comes from broken marriages. You know, when when uh, when people aren't married, or when the marriage breaks up, everybody suffers. Men suffer, women suffer, kids suffer. And what when I woke up those three mornings back in 1993, and I had the vision for this ministry, it was to change America. You know, we we would sit in our little, all the staff in my little office, and we would sit in the office and I'd say, "We'll change America. The divorce rate will drop. The marriage rate will increase. Children will be with, together with their parents. We'll see the culture change, because that's what I believe." I don't, I don't believe that this is a ministry of just kind of swirling the, you know, the stuff around and leaving things the same. I want to change the culture. I want to change every culture. See, that the marriage is the number one felt need all over the world. See it. And, so, and marriage is under attack all over the world, like never before. And I, want to, <clears throat> I, I believe from here we will change America. We, we will see a revival of marriage like never before. You know, and just like it's just like the Jesus Revolution movie that's out right now. Just when you thought there was no hope, here come a bunch of hippies. Yeah. 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 You know, and it changes America. Yeah. It changed a, a generation. And so, what I believe now is, when when the enemy comes in like a flood, the yes. spirit of love, just when you think mm -hmm. it, it's a Rocky movie, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah. just when you think you can't get back up, you know, God God is going to raise the standard. But it's, uh, <clears throat> I think that from from here. It's just such a wonderful day to be sitting here. And so. Mm. It's great. Man, Thank you. our hearts are full. It's so full. I yeah. think uh, there's an innovation company in the Silicon Valley, and they have this mission statement. And the mission statement is nothing is successful unless it fails four times. Wow. Mm. And I feel like the power of marriage and what God wants to do in our country, what God wants to do in the world, is there's a lot of people failing and yes. there's a lot of, you know, no. attack against uh, biblical marriage. There's an attack against the kingdom of God coming, you know, the kingdom of heaven coming to earth. And I think that if we look around, it would be easy to be discouraged on, you know, yeah. what marriage is and what marriage. Is. But I, have, I think we got some hope because yeah. if that st mission statement be true, right, it's it's time for us to see. God raised this standard of godly marriage up right. because of the failure that we look around. And so people are like, well, is there hope for marriage? There is hope for marriage. You bet there is. Right? Because like where there's darkness, only light can shine. That's right. And what we're excited about is being a part of this journey, this yeah. legacy, this, you know, making the room bigger. You know, yes. we feel like we're still in small rooms, right? Yeah. But we get an opportunity to build on the legacy that y'all have started. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, what, I'm, what I'm excited about is revival in homes, yeah. yes. right? Like yeah. revival mm -hmm. in homes. Like we want revival to happen in churches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's going to happen in homes first. That's right. You know, and, and if we can build that up and our kids can have confidence and they can sit around a table and see a healthy marriage, people finding out their marriage equation, yeah. that failure and death does not have the last word. That's yeah. what happened on the resurrection. Yeah. Jesus redefined yeah. Yeah. what death and failure looks like. Yeah, right. And mm -hmm. so I believe that we can have success because we see failure. Mm -hmm. So good. Yeah. Well, yeah, and we have a team now. And 
you guys representing our speaking team. When we did our conferences, I, I was the only speaker. Mm -hmm. I would speak wow. 10 to 12 times, yeah. back to back in conferences. <laughs> That's when I was young. <laughs> and Brent came to me and said, Dad, why don't we have conferences and have other speakers other than you? And I said, please. You know, and then <laughs> you, you guys, you, I think you were the first ones that came along. But, but y'all are so funny. All of you are just hilarious to listen to. And, then, and, then you'll, and this, is, this is what I feel about myself, is when I'm speaking, I want, I want to say powerful things, but I want it to be fun. Absolutely. You yeah. know, I just don't want to sit there and hammer people like that. Y'all are all so funny. And that's what people love. It, it makes it it makes it desirable, you know, to sit there and listen to something that's penetrating your soul. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, so you got. But we have a team for the mm -hmm. first time, and yes. again, that gives me hope because and it'll just continue to grow. But y'all, y'all are the first team, and uh, so y'all, y'all, y'all have got tremendous insights into because you you all have your own scars, but at the yeah. same time, you have a gift, and you're tremendous communicators. And see, Karen, Karen. Uh, and she was, she would say this of herself. She doesn't like speaking. Mm -hmm. And the, the, what she did on the TV show, we never, we never rehearsed anything on the TV show is we would have a teaching segment and then we would sit down and we would just start talking. Just talk. And she, that's, that's what she's good at. Mm -hmm. talk. But you guys are such great communicators together, which is very unusual. We've never, we've never, we've had one, I think one message together in our. wasn't worth it. <laughs> the tension. We all know that yeah. weight, huh? We know that yeah. tension. Yes. But, but, your, but your marriage is the message. That's right. It, was exactly. That's, yeah. yeah. Yes. Absolutely. That's right. Like being able to just uh, be comfortable. Karen like spoke to me. Her life spoke to me yeah. as a pastor's wife coming in. I grew up Catholic. I didn't. I was and fell in love with this guy overnight. And I mean, I'm like, but I understand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, I did. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> you're so crazy. But like, I, I had no idea what this whole ministry thing was going to look like. So yeah. she helped me understand yep. that I could be comfortable in my own skin. Right. And like, I literally used to have panic attacks thinking about ever holding a mic, right? Mm -hmm. And to see the transformation, what God has done in my life today. It's because I just um, just sat comfortably in who God created right. me to be right. and gave myself permission to just be the best version of myself. So I'm grateful to Karen for just being yeah. the standard in the sense of just being comfortable in her own skin That's and right. saying, hey, this is what I need. This is what I want. And I'm yeah. not going to be up there like yeah. with you, but I'll do have the conversations in the TV studio. <laughs> like, thank you. Yes. Thank you for being true to you. Yes. Yeah. Great. Amazing. Because we all have that different calling. And I just mm -hmm. want to say, Karen is hilarious. Right. Like, yeah. So full of wisdom, but yeah. she makes me laugh. Like, I just, I love it when yeah. I get to be around you guys. And, yeah. 
and even on the podcast, like on the Marriage Today podcast, I mean, it's just it's just so good. Like in all, all the TV shows, I mean, really a treasure. Mm-hmm. And, and and like you said, sweetie, like the marriage and your and your whole family. Yeah. That's just watching you all. Like I want to say this, you know, you've been on TV for a long time. Like yeah. you and, and then now online. And 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 you know, you're larger than life, people watching you're so wise. And a lot of times these people that are are giving all of these amazing messages and speaking the word, um, people can hold them on a pedestal. Mm-hmm. And um, and then when you get closer, it's a big letdown. But I just want to say with you and your family, it's not that way. You 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 are exactly the person that you are presenting on TV and living that life oh, for Christ. And to to us, oh, it's yeah. just so it's, it's such a gift mm-hmm. to see. It's such a gift. We've learned more from so you yes, behind yes. the scenes, just watching you interact with your family and watching how you lead and love and your faith and, and the and authenticity, the yes. vulnerability. Yeah. Um, and it's just it really is, and I think too it. Um, it challenges us to always keep it real, to always be authentic, mm-hmm. and um, and just really, it, it all comes down to following Jesus and all I've, this. I've been around preachers, y'all, y'all been around preachers, yeah, and a bunch of high-powered preachers, and I have several uh, pastors that have impacted me the most, and they were the, they were the most real. Yes, yes. Okay. yes, and the ones that I that just turn me completely off are the mm-hmm. ones that are on. And then they're behind the scenes are monsters. Exactly. You know? and, exactly. But but you know Jack Hayford was one of those, and for me, and there's others. But they were just so so real, and that's that's my my goal. And the other thing too is, I I just don't see myself as a big deal. I see myself as someone God could have taken me out a thousand times. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I, I'm just here by the grace yeah. of Jesus. Right. But I, I'm just so grateful just to be a part of mm-hmm. something that's making a difference. Exactly. And and honestly, you know, Karen and I are very private people. If 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 I were not in the ministry, I would be, you know, I I would I'd be happy just never to be known. Mm-hmm. People say when people see you on the street and recognize you, are you happy about it? And I say, no, I'd really <laughs> rather not be known. But yeah. I'm glad that all the money that we've spent has reached somebody. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. That, that's that's why I think it's Help more somebody. of a financial thing than you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But anyway. you well, it's just evidence that yeah. you've, you've reached God's you worked through you to reach exactly. reach people and you made yourself available you said yes to him yeah. and man he's done yeah. he's done huge things I loved it before we we you know we, we wrap this up like talk to us a minute just about why why marriage matters you know like why it matters in the culture why it matters in the church because <coughs> as you shared with us you know publicly and, and behind the scenes you know people are losing sight of that mm-hmm. you know people are losing sight of why it's important to be married churches you know sometimes aren't aren't as focused on it and a, a real legacy of your ministry is just raising the importance and the prominence of it for God's yeah. plan for it in a world that seems to have just forgotten that. And so I'd, I'd hate to have this conversation without giving you a chance to just talk about your your passion for marriage and why we should all have a passion for marriage. Well, you go to Genesis 1 where everything started, and uh, it says, first of all, God created the heavens and the earth. That's very controversial. Yeah. It says God made them male and female. That's very controversial. You know, and he created marriage. And he looked at Adam and said, it's not good that man's alone. And so marriage is the first institution that God ever created on purpose. God laid the foundation of society of marriage, a man and a woman. And the fall of man we call Genesis 3. Remember, Adam was on the earth a long time without Eve. Mm-hmm. And we know that because some, some people say he was on the earth 10 or 20 or longer, years or longer. Because he named all the animals of the earth. Well, that's going to take a while. <laughs> and and so, but as soon as Eve was created, Satan attacked. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah, Satan had no interest in Adam. Adam was not, because God said it, he can't he can't fulfill his destiny without a, without a helpmate. And so, as soon as Eve was created, Satan attacked. And so, marriage his is his arch enemy. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons I say is because see, in Genesis one, God said, "Let us mm-hmm. make man in our image." And said, so God said, "Elohim." Uh, the I am uh, suffix on a Hebrew word means masculine plural. It's a group of men. And in that case, it was God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit conversing and saying, let's make someone in our image. Okay, So how, do you, how does a triune God make someone in his image? He created a Christ-like male, a Holy Spirit-like female with God in the middle of it. Wow. And so marriage is a triune relationship that is an exact image of God. So when Satan sees you guys and sees Karen and I, he sees God. Because it's father, son, it's, it's the image. It's a triune relationship right. that has God in the middle of it. Well, what he wants is to destroy the image of God. Mm-hmm. So since Genesis chapter 3, remember Genesis chapter 3, he attacked marriage. Genesis chapter 6 is where it says God regretted he'd make man on the earth. 
Once he has marriage, it's, it's game, set, and match. Mm -hmm. See, all Satan is interested in is to destroy marriage. See, marriage is the foundational institution in society, and upon that institution rest uh, children, uh, finan the financial sector, the educational sector, uh, the spiritual sector. Churches, if you're going to build a church, you're going to build it on healthy families. Right. Yeah. You're not going to build it on unhealthy families. And so Satan understands if he can destroy marriage, he can destroy all of society. So you go back in world history. There's a book wow. called Family and Civilization that was released in 1947 from Harvard University, a man named Carl Zimmerman, who's a sociologist. And he proves in world history, every single time a great society has risen, it's risen on the foundation of strong biblical marriages, even if they weren't biblical people. Hmm. It is strong, a biblical, a biblical role model. But every single time, Rome, Greece, Samaria, Egypt, Babylon, every time a great society has fallen, the first thing that the first thing that happens is marriage loses its sacredness. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. Satan wow. always goes after marriage first. Yeah. So in America, this was 1947. Carl Zimmerman was warning America, saying, "You're liberalizing your family laws." And we were back in 1940. If you look back and think that was those were the good times, well, there was there were schools of thought at that time that were infiltrating uh, public policy making, and they were beginning to change policies related to divorce. Uh, you know, children, all those kind of things. Well, today we're living in the aftermath of that. Yeah. Wow. He warned us in 1947 it was yeah. happening. So Satan's playbook has never changed. So here's the point. If Satan's playbook is, if he's going to destroy a society, he destroys marriage. Well, God's playbook is, if he's going to rebuild it, he's going to rebuild marriage. Exactly. That's great. And so what we're doing in this ministry is we're le relaying a foundation. Children, children have no future without marriage. You know, you, raising children, there's some great single parents out there, yeah. but, but children need marriage. Barack Obama said that when he was president. He said children need marriage. Uh, children do better with, uh, when there's marriage. And so we, what we're doing is laying found, giving people hope to be married. And to stay married so that their children uh, and their grandchildren have a legacy of marriage. And upon that, an entire society changes. So it's, it, and, and what frustrates me the most is when churches won't talk about marriage. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, I, and I understand that you know, this is you know, something the Lord has put in me. But my desire is as society changes that the church changes mm -hmm. and we start talking about marriage. And, and y'all been with me in, in settings and where I'm talking to pastors about marriage. And when we do, they'll come up to me and they'll say, I feel so convicted. We have mm -hmm. nothing in our church for marriage. Mm -hmm. wow. And But the good news is now they, they're beginning to get it and yeah. they start yes. talking about yes. marriage. But uh, every great church in America that I know of is a marriage building church. Mm -hmm. And every church that I know of in America that's in demise won't talk about marriage. Right. And so it's, I, I, just, I, I think it's, uh, except for the gospel, 
Yeah. Marriage is the most important message. And I've said that all over I the agree. world. And so I absolutely believe it. In the church that uh, we had in Amarillo that this ministry started in, we started with 900 members and grew to 10,000. And our mar marriage ministry was just the heart and soul of everything that wow. we did. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even realize what I was doing. I, I, had no, I had no idea of the unintended consequences of building marriage. But as you're building marriage, mm -hmm. you're building leaders. We, we have mm -hmm. strong leaders in Amarillo. The, you're building the marriages, you're building the children and that legacy. So I, I've, you know, I've done this, and I've done it for a long time, not just marriage, but also pastoring yes. and building marriages. And what you see is every good thing happens when you focus on marriage. That's great. Mm -hmm. When you don't focus on marriage, every bad thing happens. Everything that God does, beginning in Genesis 1, he does through marriage. Everything the devil does, he does by destroying the foundation of marriage. Yeah. And today you have in our society, marriage is just so, it's just so toxic uh, that in, in fact, a lot of people, 70% of young men under 29 years old are single for the first time in American history. Wow. And it's just, it's horrific, mm -hmm. but we can change that generation. They have the desire for marriage. They just don't have, they don't have the hope. They don't have the skills. Yeah. Right. And so I, I just think that marriage to me is every single thing in a society. And what we do here, and by the way, that we know of this new building that we're dedicating right now is the only building in America with the word marriage on it. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. It is amazing. It is, it's amazing. It's amazing. You know, as we're sitting in this building, Jimmy and Irene, why do you think it's important that we have a building that is devoted to helping people have stronger marriages? I think as Pastor Jimmy uh, just talked about, you know, and God created mankind, you know, we have this thought of be fruitful, multiply, subdue, and have dominion. And I think in our Christian faith, the ultimate thing is that we have dominion, that heaven come to earth. Uh, heaven is not a, just a place we go to when we die. We can have heaven today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the mechanism, if you will, the incubator of that is marriage. You can't be fruitful by yourself. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can't multiply by yourself. It's kind of like DoorDash, Dave. I don't know about you. I love DoorDash. Yeah. But DoorDash is just a delivery system mm -hmm. that takes good food yeah. and delivers a product to the people. But the, but the one who delivers it, you want to kiss them and bless them. You do. Because cause they, <laughs> you do. they're just the, they're just yeah. the mess. They're just the, but they, they've done their job, uh -huh. and you, they've blessed you because of it. Absolutely. Yeah. I just want to be the door dash of, of marriage. I just want to, <laughs> right. here's the message I, I want to help deliver. Right. But I, I honestly believe that marriage is that delivery system. Mm -hmm. It's the delivery system that brings the kingdom of heaven to the kingdom of earth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've gotten, I've ordered DoorDash before and the, the, the driver broke down, the driver got lost. You know, there was dysfunction yes. in the delivery system. And I think if we realize the power of marriage, that we can deliver peace yeah. that is in heaven yeah. to yeah. peace on earth, that we can deliver unity that is in heaven to unity on earth. Psalms 133, how good and pleasant it is and brethren dwell together in unity. 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 Yep. Yes. Marriage, I believe, is the truest form of heavenly unity. Mm -hmm. yeah. And God, yeah. when we do that, Psalms 133 says that we have the anointing to command a blessing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I believe that this is the delivery, the door dash of dominion. Come on, somebody. I love, oh, it. I love it. There you go. That we can deliver I, I agree with that. to earth. I agree yeah. with that. You know, I'm, when I think about this, I think about when I think about marriage, right, and everything you're saying, it's we get to be the reflection of the gospel. Yes. What you were saying. So if the gospel is the very first message that yep. is what I heard you say that's most important, marriage is just simply the reflection that's of exactly it. Right. Oh, that's great. Because that's exactly like right. I think about our story and our journey, and it's like I learned about the redemptive power of Jesus Christ. The love, unconditional love of Jesus Christ wow. through the way you love me. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, it wasn't a church service. It wasn't a, some other experience. All of those things were good and a part of leading me on my journey. But it was your love that demonstrated that I, you canceled this assignment of the enemy in my own mind that was trying to tell me that I'm not That's enough. Right. I'm not good oh, enough. Wow. I'm yeah. not worthy. I'm inherently worthy of love. And because of my yuck that you, my addiction, my all of those things, my PTSD, my trauma, that you loved me through, you have now given our children and the next generation wow. hope yeah. that, oh my gosh, marriage does work. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Jesus is real. Yeah, How great. about, at my remember my book launch? My yeah. daughter said, 
my 22-year-old daughter got up and testified that she grew up in church with an amazing pastor as her dad, yeah. but it was when <laughs> she saw you love me yeah. through my recovery and my addiction that she saw Jesus was real mm -hmm. to her for the wow. first time. Wow. How, so like, that blew me away. Mm -hmm. And it's like, so we get to be a part of that reflection. It's that unity. It's that demonstration to the next generation. Yes. And I think that's what this place is all about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is we're going to build the kingdom of God through building healthy marriages. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And yep. we get to do it together. Mm hmm yeah. Wow. What, a, yeah. what an adventure we get to do. I know. Yeah. It's, it's a, we were just talking surreal. about that. Surreal. It is surreal. And it keeps you on your toes, too. Like, yeah. when you're actually working to help other people's marriages, mm -hmm. you bet, yeah. you know, you, you we, we're always working on our yeah. marriage, too. <laughs> yeah. But I, I love what you said about it being a reflection of Christ and Christ in the church. You know, it's mm -hmm. very um, explicit in the Bible it, or specific about it. It says, like, this is what marriage is. It reflects Christ in the church, which is, you know, a very high calling on us as married mm -hmm. people. Yeah. And, I, but I, I do, I see what you're saying about kids watching, like that, that is such a comfort to children, just even seeing you work through your stuff because wow. we're not perfect, no. but Come them on. seeing like, oh my goodness, they're not giving up on each mm -hmm. other. It's great. Like, yeah, they're having a bad day and, mm -hmm. and we are, we're human beings. We're going to have a bad day, but mom and dad are going to fight through this yeah. for each other, yeah. not against each other mm -hmm. because God is helping them along the way. Absolutely. And I do think that is such a reflection of what God actually does, like right before their very yeah. eyes. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, Jimmy touched on this earlier. One reason why we're seeing less and less uh, people get married is because I think maybe at home they never saw that yeah, because right. their own parents didn't know where to go. Yeah. They didn't yeah. know what to do. They yeah. felt like it was just too overwhelming and they just, you know, they ended up maybe divorcing or maybe having a loveless marriage. So mm -hmm. even though their parents were married, it was just this cavernous, cold place where they never really yeah. saw that love between them mm -hmm. and maybe not even that fighting for each other. Yeah. And, you know, I think there's that, but I also think there's such a fear in getting it wrong. Like we, we talked to a lot of single yeah. people where, you know, they don't have those examples, but mm. also just a, it's like this daunting, that, that's a can deal. I even do this? Right. You know, it, it's, it's such a huge thing. And I love that there is a building here that's not only for people whose marriages are in crisis. We definitely are that. We have our exo mediators who can help and all the content that's developed here, but also for people whose marriages are good and they want to take it to that next it's level. Great. Yeah, it's great. But one thing I love is that XO, I mean, we're going to be reaching those people who are just wanting to date and get it right and then get engaged and learn how to be married. You that's know, right. yeah. uh, Marriage Today, or, or I'm sorry, XO Marriage exists and this building exists to meet people right where they are at all the different seasons mm -hmm. of life. And I love that at this building, they can come, they can experience that or whatever's going to be developed here, they can experience online. And I think there's just something so special about an actual standing building that is declaring that for yes, the world. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. I, you know, I pray because, you know, someone asked me, if, did I see this building when I had the original vision? I didn't. That what I saw was um, that we made a difference. The marriage, you know, the a biblical message of marriage that was very loving and gracious but we made a difference. One of the things I pray for is that there, we will have a ministry one day that, that specifically goes after young people dating and looking to be married. Yes. Because the, the two things that are killing marriage right now for young people are dating apps and pornography. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And yes. you have you know the young men out there that are basically getting all their needs met that mm -hmm. they think are, they're getting their needs met. But then also when we have a date and you say something I don't like, I just go back on the dating app and right. start shopping around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And wow. so in my generation, we had nothing. You know, we just had to deal with the people in front of us. <laughs> we, right. we, we didn't have any, any other choices. <laughs> but today it's really, it's really killing marriage. But see, they, they have this need. God made us to need marriage. Mm -hmm. Is so most people, most, over 90% of the people say they want to be married for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. They just don't know how. Yeah. Right. And that young generation is the most relationally ignorant generation in the history of the world. And literally, because there's never been a generation like ours deceived so much by uh, the Internet mm -hmm. and everything on there. So I really do pray that there will be um, a, a movement among the young people before marriage to, wow. to get them, to train them how to date, mm -hmm. how to view the opposite sex, how to believe, you know, how to get off the pornography and all those stuff. Like that. And there's nothing wrong with dating apps necessarily. But they become a, they become a shopping center for, for relationships yes. rather than knowing you know, even if this is God's perfect person, even if this is my soulmate that I'm about to marry, we're going to have issues mm -hmm. yeah. that we're going to have to deal with. So I really, I really do believe that that um, this building represents the future. Yes. And just like we've seen this ministry grow in 30 years, it's it's going to exponentially grow in the future. 
Wow. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm so excited Absolutely. to see what the next 30 years yeah. holds. Oh, my and goodness. Friends, listen, we want to thank you for taking the time to watch and listen to this. And I'm going to give you a few challenges as we go. Number one, go to exomarriage.com. Yes. And check out the many, many resources that are there. We have so many resources available. And if specifically, if you need help for your marriage, Ashley mentioned our mediators earlier. It's one of the most powerful aspects of this ministry. We have a team that's available to, to meet with you here in person at the headquarters or by phone or Zoom uh, to, to make it where you don't even have to leave your home. You can go to exomarriage.com slash help and get all the information about that. I also want to encourage you to check out the Two Equals One podcast yes. with our dear friends, the Rollins. It is pure gold. Okay. And if you're not following them on social media, you're missing out. So follow <laughs> them. And I also, if you really want to grow in your marriage, then I want you to do something that I do often. And that's just go to YouTube and search for Jimmy Evans yes. and start watching what you see. Because yes. there, there's so mm -hmm. much rich Absolutely. teaching through the years of just this absolutely anointed, incredible mm -hmm. uh, preacher and man of mm -hmm. God. And I, I've learned so much from you and continue to. Good. And yes. so... Yes. So learn from him as well. Your life will be mm -hmm. blessed because of it. My love, any final words? I think you said it all, sweetie. I just want to say, I guess real quick, I'm just honored to be in this company. Absolutely. I'm telling you, in, we love you just Thank part you. of the team. I mean, I'm going to probably cry, but it just you've touched my heart so much. And um, I'm just so grateful for all of you. We love you guys. We love you guys. We're very proud of you all. Glad to have you be a part of our family. So. Thank you. Well, our hearts are full. We love you guys as love well. You're part of this. You're an extension of this family too. Come and visit the Exo Marriage Center here at the marriage capital of the world in marriage South Cal Lake, Come Texas. Right. We'd love right. to have you. We've got a coffee for you waiting over here at Exo Press. Right. And we would love to hang out with you. God bless. We'll see you next time. Take care.